So we've had a significant contribution to make. I'm not going to go through the detail. We have only got 10 minutes. So uh, we have had a significant contribution um, to the health of uh, people who use maternity services. So on average, we have 660 births per year in England and we have a maternity transformation program that is helping us to transform our services so that we have so that England is the safest place in the world to be pregnant, birth and transition into parenthood. So I'm not going to go through the detail. We're five years into a five year programme and we're transitioning into the long term plan now. Next slide, please. So our ambition, um, other speakers have alluded to this ambition. Um, Misha may well allude to this too, but we have a safety ambition and a personalization ambition. And of course, as you can see there, um, this is about uh, reduction in stillbirth, in brain injury, in maternal death, in preterm birth. And the whole personalization is about not providing care for buildings, but providing care for people. And that's underpinned by the health inequality challenge because we have a disproportionate, um, uh, the, um, we have inequality in health, in maternal health outcomes for communities like in the smoking space predominantly for social, the socially economically disadvantaged women and for um, other inequalities in outcomes related to um, neonatal death, stillbirth, stillbirth and maternal death that is really focused in communities that from uh, black, uh, Asian, uh, mixed ethnicity backgrounds and socioeconomically disadvantaged women. On to the next slide. So how we're contributing to this agenda in terms of the stop smoking is all of the above. Personalised care that I mentioned will ensure that we have um, purposeful and meaningful conversations with women who are smoking to help them in terms of uh, stop smoking, immediate stop smoking advice, very brief advice, and then referral on. But as you can see here, our progress towards achieving the safety ambition, we are making strides and we do know that we have on record um, today the, uh, the lowest uh, stillbirth rate ever on record. And that's something um, to be commended in this space at this time. Things may change once we get through some of the, or once we are um, sensitized to the, uh, the uh, pandemic data, the COVID data, but nonetheless, right now, we are delighted that we are moving in the right direction. We have a long way to go with some of our communities that experience inequality in health outcome, but for the majority, we are moving in the right direction, but we have a long way to go. Reflecting back on my career that spans 30 years, I'm always quite um, surprised that our pace of change isn't more than what it is. And smoking is the most um, single most preventable risk factor. And yet our progress has been laboured, but we have a good news story to, to say about that. And we are making huge strides in stopping smoking. And indeed, in the type of person that is continuing to smoke in terms of the socioeconomic status. So a uh, really good story. We have a, a long way to go still to meeting the ambition, but this graph shows that we're on trajectory for doing that. Next slide, please. Um, one thing that I really want to measure on, I don't think uh, uh, Misha will talk about, is the continuity of carer and how does the maternity programme contribute to uh, this particular agenda? Well, the continuity of care is care provided by the same midwife throughout the antenatal labour and postnatal period. The evidence is compelling. You can see it there for yourselves in terms of improved outcomes and improved experiences and also improved experiences for the working lives of midwives if the model is implemented properly. Um, but in relation to the smoking space, personalised care Sharing your information with somebody who is known to you means that you will share accurate information about your smoking um, uh, status uh, and um, 
other factors that are influencing why you are choosing to smoke um, or not choosing. It's not a choice for many, it's a crutch, as we know. So the, the continuity of care will really assist and is assisting with supporting women to have those meaningful conversations, to look at the backstory, not just look at the story that's being presented um, during a consultation when people are in theory strangers if they haven't gone through that continuity for midwives and for obstetricians so as you can see there this is our state of play we have one sixth of women that are receiving continuity of care in england um, today and we our ambition in the long term in the uh, better birth and the long-term plan is that most women will receive continuity of carer on to the next slide i'm just going to canter through a little bit faster now because I'm running out of time. So I've mentioned the national ambition and uh, this is the ambition in the long term plan. Um, so uh, just majoring on the ambition in the long term plan, uh, the NHS will accelerate action to achieve 50% reductions in stillbirth, maternity, maternal mortality, neonatal mortality and serious brain injury by 2025. On to the next slide. So these are the priorities, and as you can see there, um, if we focus on bottom left, and that is the implementation of the Saving Babies Lives Care Bundle, and naturally, of course, element one is really uh, uh, pertinent for this particular event in relation to the Stop Smoking Challenge. On to the next slide. mentioned those uh, previously, Saving Babies Lives Care Bundle, the long-term plan is now our live um, uh, policy, Better Births has transitioned into this plan, on to the next slide. So, uh, very specifically, the Saving Babies Lives Care Bundle, we're, we're all familiar with this um, element, element one, and that is reducing smoking in pregnancy, and our previous speaker spoke about um, the pause in CO monitoring because of uh, uh, the, the science around um, uh, experiences or services that create that increased viral load. So uh, now we have a situation where we are resuming uh, CO monitoring, but during that time, can I just say, during the time where we had suspended using CO monitoring because it was considered to be an aerosol generating procedure and now we've resumed that for most uh, in between times midwives and obstetricians did not stop uh, providing guidance support and referral for women who uh, shared their smoking status at booking or subsequent antenatal appointments but nonetheless we're right back on track um, i would still say that we are not 100 percent there with the implementation and the dissemination of Saving Babies Lives Care Bundle, all the elements, but we are, our ambition is to really ask the system, our, uh, our maternity providers, to implement at pace and to get back on track. On to the next slide. So my call to action after that whistle stop uh, uh, presentation is, is really to think back, and I'm going back probably over my career, which is 30 years, thinking back over 30 years and thinking where we were 30 years ago with uh, uh, Stop Smoking, our initiatives, our interventions, our education and training, referral, referral pathways, what women really thought about what we, the advice we gave about smoking and what they didn't think, the ripple effect through their families and where we are today, a 30 year history. What I will say is, is that what we do, our contact uh, ripples through generations, our contribution ripples through generations. Why? Because we know that the environment in the womb is significant in terms of what might happen to that individual when they're middle-aged, younger or even older in terms of their health potential. And I'm thinking of cardiac disease and smoking. And there are other things that um, uh, can be attributed to the environment in the womb in terms of the psychological challenges too. So uh, our call, my call to action 
based on all of the above is, is that we have a 30 year history, we have a long way to go, we have made strides, yes we have, but we now want 100% implementation of the Saving Babies Lives Care Bundle and this single most preventable risk factor for mums who smoke to be um, uh, reduced and for the appropriate interventions to be put in place so that we can say we have a smoking rate that is less than the target that we have set ourselves today, less than that. So thank you very much for listening and um, uh, hope you found that helpful.